Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the Jan 2020 PUE paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So please be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. All right, so as per usual, we're going to take a read of the question. It says, on 1 Jan 2013, the Gargamel company showed a balance of 12,000 in its provision for bad and doubtful debts account. Gaga Mail Company provides a bad and doubtful debt of 5% of its year-end receivables. Okay, cool. So, accounts receivable at the end of two years were as follows. So, we have 31st December 2013, 270,000. 31st December 2014, 255,000. So, it says, starting with the balance on 1 Jan 2013, Prepare the provision for bad and doubtful less account with the two years ended 31st December 2014. Show dates appropriately and balance the account at the end of each year. Right. So before I jump in, if you want to have a proper tutorial on the provision for bad as account, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So please be sure to check that out if you need to learn this topic from scratch. Other than that, let's get into the solution. So the first thing where it says that on 1 Jan 2013, it showed a balance of 12,000. That's going to be on the credit side of the account, right? The provision for bad and doubtful debts is a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the value of account receivable in the balance sheet in accordance with the prudence concept. We know that we are not going to collect 100% of the account receivable. Therefore, if we show that full 100% in the balance sheet and classify as an asset, we are providing relatively misleading information. So we as accountants have a responsibility to provide reliable information. So we will make an, an estimate of the value of debts we expect to go bad and deduct it from that receivable balance to give a more realistic estimate of the actual value we expect to collect. Right now, what do we have to do? So at the end of December 31st, 2013, we have a 270,000 receivables balance and we have to find 5% of that and make that the receivables, sorry, the provision figure. So 5% of that will be 120 us, which is like 13,500, which means that we have to increase this from 12,000 to 13,005, which is an increase of 1,500. And of course, to record an increase in the provision, we have to credit the provision account. So that's gonna give us a total balance carried on of 13,500. And that's going to be brought down on the credit side in 2014, 1 Jan 2014. Now, at the end of 2014, what's going to happen? 255. Now, if 5% of 270 was 13.5, 5% of 250 will be, will be some figure less. So we're going to have to find that figure, which is 12,750. And then because that is a decrease, right? Because the balance that has to be carried on is 12,750, right? Don't mind the totals, we'll still say 13,500, eh? The balance carried on is 12,750. We're going to have to debit the provision account to record that decrease because if we have a credit balance initially, to reduce a credit balance, you have to debit the account. And that's going to be 750. And the balance brought down, start of 2015, is 12,750. Okay, so let's scroll down and check out the next part of the question. So they want us to show or prepare rather a balance sheet extract for Gargamel Company for 2014, showing the effect of the provision on account receivable. So at the end of 2014, so the account receivable balance at the end of 2014 was 255. The balance we just found, I think it was, was 12,750. So what we have to do, right? Of course, don't forget to head up properly. Gargamel balance sheet extract as at December 31st, 2014, right? So you're going to put account receivable 255 minus the 12,750, and that's going to give us 242,250. Now, I used to call it net realizable value, but I've been told it's actually supposed to be net receivables. Sorry. Right. Right. Or net debtors, if you prefer that. Okay. So let me just rearrange my screen to check out the next part of the question. Okay, so we read, it says the Gaga Mail Company maintains separate ledger accounts for rent expense and commission revenue. During the end, at 31st December 2015, Gaga Mail Company recorded the following information. So at the start, we have prepaid rent. Then we have two sets of rent paid and we have the rent expense account of 12,000 per year. And they want us to do the rent expense account. Okay, cool. So let's start with the prepaid balance. So prepaid expenses are assets and we have a balance brought down on the debit side for that. Right. Then we're going to have two sets of payments, both of which will be on the debit side. Right. Now, the reason is because rent is an expense. And if we're paying something, whether by cash or by check, we're going to have to credit the cash book because that will give us a decrease 
in our cash or bank. And cash and bank are both assets. To record decreases in assets, you have to credit. Right? So when you credit there, you're going to debit the other account affected by the transaction. Now, the rent expense piece, that's the income statement figure, which is going to go on the credit side of the account. Because again, expenses decrease profit. So in the income statement, expenses will be debits. So if they are debited to the income statement, you have to credit where it came from, which is the rent expense account itself. Now, what we could see here is that we have 12,000 on the credit side, but this side only has about 10,600, which means that I don't think we paid enough, right? So what that means is that we're gonna have a balance brought down this time on the credit side, which implies an accrued rent expense, a liability. All right, okay, let's check out the next part of the question. Okay, so we see it says Gargamel Company was owed 2,500 in commission revenue on 1 Jan 2015. During the year, an amount of 14,000 was received and deposited into the company's bank account. At the end of the year, there were no amounts outstanding or received in advance for commission revenue. All right, so first thing I want is under which heading in the balance sheet with the, of the previous year would the 2,500 have been recorded? So the 2,500 was commission owed to Gargamel. If we are owed revenue, that's a current asset. It's a receivable. So under current assets, right, that would be this particular answer here. Right, current assets and they also want us to do a commission revenue account so let's start there so if commission revenue owed right revenue accrued is a current asset or an asset generally speaking right we are going to put that balance brought down on the debit side nice next the amounts we received during the year 14,000 would go on the credit side because again if we receive it we're going to debit cash or bank because when we receive money cash or bank are increasing and therefore, to record an increase in an asset, you're going to have to debit the asset account. And if you debit in there, you credit in here. Now, it also said at the end of the year, there were no balances outstanding or received in advance for commission revenue, which means there's no balance carried down at end, which means, therefore, we simply have to balance this off and it will require that, right? Income statement 11.5. So this is the amount of commission revenue earned. Right? And that is the balancing figure in this question. And that's about it for this question, guys. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. Check out my website for free POA handouts. And thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.